Hey, welcome to another episode of Behind the Bar podcast brought to you by the coaches and clients of Arte Fitness Durham, Sunderland and of course the Barbell Club where we take you from complete beginner to photo shoot ready. Um, we are opening up the new Barbell facility over in Southwick Sunderland on Monday, February 13th. So get in touch about that. Also, if you want to sign up to our 90 day total transformation, the link is in the description below. So on today's podcast, we have Coach Dan, and we get really deep about habits and how sleep can actually stop you from starting all those new habits, what you're trying to do throughout, especially the start of the new year, and how sleep is probably one of the most fundamental things what can actually stop you from getting the results you want. Brilliant episode, as always. Dan knows what he's talking about. So enjoy the show. Right, Dan. So this one is all going to be about um, habits, goal setting, obviously, 2023. <laughs> new year, new me. Um, maybe it's not so much goal setting, but I love habits. I love studying habits. Um, I love implementing the habits. I love teaching habits and all the rest of it. But one thing that stood out on a Stephen Bartlett podcast, uh, Diary of a CEO, was he said, every single thing that I've learned in any way, small incremental things build up over time make sure the frictionless as possible make sure you're rewarding yourself afterwards because if we i don't know like you know how we do it with clients like if you lose 10 pounds or something your spouse will buy you a pair of shoes or yes. something so something like that so he said all of these things but then at the end what he said was like you'll never stick to your habits if you're in a state of stress and generally when we're in a state of stress it's because of our lack of sleep <laughs> what do you think of that? Um, obviously, the, the habit stuff we've spoke about a million times before. It's interesting with the sleep. Yeah. But the thing is, it's when seeing the sleep deprived, obviously yes. that's why they're reverting, reverting. They're not doing the current habits. Yeah. But what are they doing? So what they're doing is they'll be reverting back to pre-existing habits, yeah. which are obviously more strongly ingrained. Yeah. And ultimately, this comes down to why nutrition and fitness and all that is such a hard thing for someone to go from being a very overweight, unfit, unhealthy person to being a fit, healthy person. Because all these habits, no matter how long you try and build them. So how long have we, how long have we been training? Probably 10 years yeah, for me. Yeah, how long yeah. have you been training? How old am I? 38. Um, so first couple of years was on and off, like between 18 to 21-ish, but then took it more, say it was 22, so 16 years. So say, from, say I've trained 10 years, say from the moment I started training, I did every single thing right, yeah. which no one does. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, no one gets it right at all. It's constantly yeah. just learning, and the same as for the clients. That would be 10 years of doing everything right, which obviously is impossible anyway. It's still fighting 18 years of what you did beforehand. Yep. And all, any habit you implement, is always going to be such a small frame of time compared to the amount of time that you've done what's normal to you. Yeah, because I mean the saying is old habits die hard, mm -hmm. but on this, like he only did like a micro podcast, he says those actually old habits, you'll never actually get rid of them. Yeah. He says so you either have to replace them mm. or like just know that they're always going to be haunting you in the background. Yeah, well, the thing is, it's, it's, it's what point of the habit and what point of the just who you are. Right, in a okay. sense, obviously, depending on where the environment you grew, you grew up in, things. I mean, I touched on, I was saying before, about the, um, the habits and lifestyle and social and economic factors affecting yeah. weight loss. And obviously, in that seminar that we did, I talked about how it's similar to your idiolect, which it's, I love. It's the your idiolect. Right, okay. Um, so, your idiolect, how you talk, the okay. words you're using. Um, so, do you know the Unabomber? Was it He's in Netflix? America. So, sure. they caught. Yeah, they did a Netflix one about him, but right, okay. he, was a, he was a multiple bomber in America in right. the 80s and 90s. Someone, Clint Skosinski, I can't remember his name, he's a genius anyway. Um, but him, he, the reason they caught him was through forensic linguistics, right. which is the study of the words and the language that people use. And what they found is it's actually more unique than your fingerprint, because no one else will have the same use of language and words and different things as you, because yours is so unique. In sense, right. the way you talk and the way you communicate and the way you do everything is all part of the experiences you've had. So where you went to school, where you went to nursery, the time you spent working abroad. All those different things create you. And yeah. everyone's just completely unique because even your siblings, you just grew up in the same house, but you've had totally different lives and totally different situations and different workplaces. 
me sitting sat in different tables at school. Different friends. Different yeah. friends, and all those things contribute to the way you are. And that's the same with your diet. It's the same with the way you eat, with the way you live your life. All of these things throughout your childhood, throughout your life, build you. And in order to change that, it would be like me sitting there saying, right, I want you to speak with a Scottish accent now. <laughs> How long do you think you could do it? You'd have to live in Scotland for a fair few years. No, but see, if I just said now, just talk with a Scottish accent for as long as you damn, can. I can't, I can't you do, no, you do it for like, what, 10 minutes? Before? Yeah, yeah, and I'm that, not going to... That is literally, yeah. <laughs> if you go to someone who's totally unfit, unhealthy, grew up in an unfit, unhealthy family, had unfit, unhealthy friends, by going over and giving them a diet plan, which is the first thing most trainers do, yeah. you might as well be saying, speak a different fucking language. Yeah. Because it's so... And that, that's when we talk about these old habits. This is what we're talking about. This is how ingrained those things are into a person's being. It's the same as literally how you talk, how you think, everything. It's all a process of your entire life, your developmental from being a child, the way your brain's actually developed to be during those phases. Yeah. It's like the thing with them. Um, they talk about sport. And they say by the time you get to say like 13, a lot of like your neuro, neurological stuff's develops. So if you haven't got good like coordination stuff by that age, it's almost impossible to go back and get it. Right. Um, like th at that point, once you get to sort of puberty, that's kind of what you've done up until then is there. And then anything you build on there builds on top of that. But if you've got terrible coordination, if you can't catch, if you can't do things like that, you haven't developed those skills when you're young, you can't develop them later on in life. Or it's very difficult to. Because that's what yeah. by the say with um, the kids. If you're going to get your kids into sport, the best thing you can do is to get them doing as many different sports as possible. Yeah. The biggest uh, yeah, yeah. Here, you want the kid to be a footballer, so all they do is football. But then all you end up is a really limited athlete. If you do gymnastics, swimming, football, rugby, ten, like all these different sports, you're going to develop all these skills when you're young, and that way you've developed all the, the base of the pyramid type thing, and then you be more specific as you get older. Right. <clears throat> and obviously, well, <laughs> it's the same with anything. It's, well, I was, I was a good tree when, climber. <laughs> you, when, you, when, you, when you're developing those skills, once you get past a certain point, they are just, your brain's developing at the same time. They yeah. become almost part of you. And that is going back to the sleep thing. That's what you're reverting back to. You're just reverting back to you, you de the, you know, the self that you've developed over, say, 20 odd years, the start of your life. And doing something for six months is never going to be a strong enough or a year or even 10 years. It's still going to be the small, you've still done it for less time than you've done the opposite thing. So, so I think from the sleep bit itself, is because it puts the, because the, the lack of yeah. sleep, it's putting them into a state of stress. Mm. And because of that state of stress, now they're reverting back to how they always are. Yeah. Because the patterns, what they're trying to do, well, they've never done it in any way. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's so easy to fall yeah, back. Of course. That. The thing is, that ultimately, the answer is how can you change that, the original? And really, you can't. Right. It's why you, it's so hard to have success with people who are so far down the line. So if you think of like a scale, up here you've got like very fit, healthy people and here you've got the complete opposite. How many of those clients can you get from there to there? It's, there's, ve like, there's it's very, lim there's, there's a very, very limited and it's because of the scale of change. Um, and that's, that's why, ultimately, that's why all that proves like, because as soon as you get into a state of discomfort, a state of not being on it, you're always going to revert back to your most, the most basic version of you without the things you've added in at a later date. I mean, we could use clients as an example, like David Wise, who's been on the podcast, mm. where he is now at like peak physique, yeah. but he's always done stuff through his life. Yeah. Fitness, uh, football, mm. running, and then obviously doing little bits of weights in Definitely. the gym. Um, he did kickboxing at yeah. a young age as well. And obviously all these bits have added up, but then like he was never where he wanted to be. So he's only at that implement a small changes yeah. to yeah. So to I think this, I mean, <coughs> most, most clients that do well, you're getting them from there to there. Yeah. They're already halfway there because they've had not a terrible background. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? The ones that have had a really poor background, really poor relationship with food are almost going to be impossible to, to fix. And I, I don't mean that to sound depressing. Yeah. It's just it's trying to explain. People need to understand the scale of the change of what they're trying, trying to do. And it is, it's... Anyone, everyone in the under stress is never going to keep up. The thing is, it comes down to the path of least resistance as well. If you're facing difficulties, yes. you're going Friction. to do the things that are easier. It's always going to be easier to not train than to train. Even for us, if we're, do you know what I mean? If something awful happens to us tomorrow, 
both of us would probably not train this week. Do you know what I mean? Just because no matter how ingrained that, that, that habit is into us, if something else takes priority or something's going on, you're going to drop the things that are the hardest first. Yeah. yeah. And that's because like, it's always going to be easier to not train than to train. For anyone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It just is. Of course. It's, 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 Anything that dips the steps, it's always going to be, no matter how active you are, it's going to be easier to not do them than to do them. So therefore, in order to be making, doing those things that are inherently difficult, you're going to have to be doing it from a state of strength. Yeah. Not weakness. So, I mean, we, we're, we're, from all that, what you've just said, I mean, we could do it like, um, because obviously it is the new year now, and where we do have a lot of new clients, yeah. and we try and... Uh, ingrained into the three main RT habits, which is your 10,000 yeah. steps, you um, track your food, mm. and train three times a week. Now, all of these sound so easy when I'm just saying them out loud. Of course. 10,000 steps for a new person going from two... Oh, it depends what they do daily. Yeah. For someone who's relatively active, it's fine. For someone who's got an active job, fine. If you're doing two or 3,000 steps a day, it's miles. It's, 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 it is. it's a huge thing to do that every day. Do you know what I mean? It is hard. From not doing it. I mean, obviously, Hope's got an office job. And like, yeah. the times you went, like, obviously, I'm here, I'm at work all day, and then coming in. And because the things you've got like four or 5,000 steps, and you're having to go out then late at night in the dark in the cold room, and I don't need to get the steps, and it's fucking shit. <laughs> like, obviously, people that's are like, the friction point yeah, there. It is shit, it? and it's shit for me. I'll do it because that's just the way my brain works. I'll make myself do it. But for anyone who's not at that, point it's a hard thing to drag yourself to do so it's so easy to see why people do stop because it's hard because they've already had a pattern interruption so we'll, we'll stick yeah. on the new client thing there because they've already had a pattern interruption of say trying to train three to four times yeah. a week now that in their sense is like they are now because their time was full before that and now they're trying to make time for just the session itself which is probably like i always say it's the most important one because everything else tries mm -hmm. to fall around it because when you train when you train, you generally eat well alongside, yeah. and as soon as you're off, you stop eating well. But that, um, that one itself is a pattern interruption itself, and now they've got to try and hit the 10,000 steps. Yeah, it's huge. It's not a small thing. Is, that is all a person needs to do to be fit and healthy. Yeah. In fact, a lot of people who are fit and healthy enough, or certainly what most people would consider to be fit and healthy, don't even do that. You know I mean, like, some, some do, but do you know what I mean? It's like, if you can do that every day, you're going to be a fit and healthy person. What the steps? If you go to steps, you're going to yeah. get your, eat your food and you're going to train. Like that's that's enough for yeah. the average person to. If, as long as you do those things, you can get anywhere you want just doing those things. So it is quite a big. Yeah. Jeremy, you know you're going from nothing to everything. Yeah. It is. Obviously, realistically, what you're saying when you're saying those things, you're saying go and do an hour's training every day. Well, most days, maybe four days a week. You're saying basically go and walk four mile. If they have an office-based job or a desk-based yeah. job or whatever, yeah. then yes. So obviously, them three things to. are dead easy to say. But yeah. if you say you've got to train for an hour today, you've got to walk four mile, and you've got to track every single thing you eat, and you've got to look at the macros in it, and make sure there's how much protein, and you've got to add all that up, and you've got to make sure that, you, like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's dead simple to us because it's so second nature. Yes. When you break it down, there's a lot of little changes in there for a lot of people. Do you know what I mean? Huge. It's obscene. Yeah. Like, of course, people aren't going to get it the first time, but it's important to work, like it's, work, it's a work in progress, which is what I try to explain to everyone with the protein, with everything else. Yeah. It's like, we don't expect you to walk in and suddenly be tracking your food perfect, getting your protein bang and doing everything from the day you walk in. It's a work in progress. But as long as you yeah. get closer to doing that every day, then that's what you can do and you'll get there eventually. So that's the 10,000 steps, tracking. Yeah. <laughs> Tracking going from so that's it. That's obviously we try and get them habit wise because at the end of the day, if you if you do track your food for six months straight, oh, of course, you probably never need to track a day in your life again because no, you get you get well again <coughs> until something comes along that knocks you off your rhythm. Yeah, like we're saying before either like sleep or something else, but yeah, if, if you can do it for six months, that's long enough to build a habit. Yeah, definitely. But it's it, but I'm, I'm saying even, even that habit in itself, it's like. Because, like we said, we've, you've got to, for us, it, it's attend your sessions, 10,000 steps, and then track your food on top. But the frictions between tracking your food and not, I mean, I mean, let's try and imagine we're a brand new client who hasn't a clue about nutrition. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? You don't know what's in anything. So to even try to hit your macros and that, most yeah. people, a lot of people don't even know what a macro is. What pro, like, they don't know what, like, so they've probably heard it before, but like, they don't actually know what the food's have and you're saying like six months the thing with a six month of tracking every day more so than the habit of tracking just learning food 
Yeah, it, learning well, it what's is, in it food is, to make, yeah. like learning what choices to make. Because most people pick terrible food. <laughs> like, the gen, like the general person that isn't involved in the gym, that's just a normal person living a normal life. Like the foods that eat are nowhere near, like it's the complete other end of the spec spectrum to what yeah. they need to be eating. You know what I mean? If we went, if me and you went like, normal, like a, 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 someone's house who doesn't train, we probably wouldn't be able to make a meal. Do you know what I mean? We'd be, we'd be going like chicken nuggets and, and, and take, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You would be like, I don't know what to eat. Yeah. Like we'd almost be as lost as they would be if they come like, you know, there's only fucking chicken and fucking ham and fucking cornflakes. <laughs> do you know what I mean? People would be lost. So it is, it's, it's, it's a huge, it'd be like us trying to eat completely poorly. How, like, we'd get sick, it'd be hard for us to do. What, I mean, what advice would you give in the, um, for somebody to tr try and create the habits of tracking them? Well, start, start tracking, which is the, the thing uh -huh. in the sense that most people don't like, they'll just not even bother. Actually try to do it, but focus on breaking it down into things. So like, focus on say, a meal, like get a good breakfast in or something, and yeah. make sure you try to get in the habit of having that breakfast every day, and then whatever, lunch, tea, and trying to make changes all the time and just make little changes. But the thing is breaking it down as well as like trying to eat, like eat slowly, mindfully, and sit there and think, what am I eating? Why am I eating it? And ask you the question, do you know what I mean? If you're sitting there with a fucking dirty kebab in front of you going, why am I eating this? Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be, hmm. Like, you're not, you can't, like, you're not going to yeah. be able to, like, so if you actually ask, sit down and think about what you're doing and actually just be mindful, be mindful of what you're actually doing. Most people just wander around all day just shoveling things into the gob. They're not actually sitting and thinking about what am I, like, why am I eating this? Convenience. Like the, av the, the average person who doesn't track, doesn't train, like, I don't think, I'd, I wouldn't know how to eat. If I wasn't tracking, I don't think I'd know how to eat. I don't know if you're probably the same in the sense, like, everything what? I do, like, everything I eat, you're sitting there and thinking, and it's a process. I would, like, you won't just grab something and yeah. eat it for the sake of eating it. Well, I, I think what's ingrained in me and you especially, like, I, I can't have a meal without a high-protein content in there. Yeah. But like, like, I find it yeah. a pointless meal in a sense. But the thing is, I mean, I don't know if you were like me as a kid, but, like, we, like, as kids, we never ate, like, shit food. We never ate, like, your trees of food. But every meal... Oh, we did. Was a, every meal's a proper meal. And every right. meal would have meat. It would be a portion, like you would have like a chicken breast, a pork chop, like it might be mince and dumplings. Yeah. Every, oh, every, I love pork every, <laughs> I still have them once a week. <laughs> every meal would have like a, a proper bit of protein. It would be like a dinner, do you know what I mean? There'd be a, a proper lump. So for me, it's an easy habit. Because you had quite dinners. Like it always baffles me when like people order like chips, rice and curry sauce from the Chinese. Yes. It's not a meal, it's just a pile of sides. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? Where's your, where's your meat? I couldn't eat that. Yes. I did, <clears throat> when I was younger, like if me mum and dad were ordering a Chinese in, um, it would generally be curry rice and chips yeah. for us, but they would have the meaty portion yeah. stuff. And I used to always pinch mm. bits out. What does that mean? Like I've seen a master, like since I've started living with Hope, obviously like when she was a kid, she did a lot of her cooking herself. She was pretty much self-sufficient. Right. So like, <laughs> super noodles. Do you know what I mean? Like she was just, <coughs> she just, she just got on, like, <coughs> like obviously mum wasn't there and stuff. And she just got on with stuff um, as best as she could. And then obviously coming in, Living with me, obviously focusing on things. It's like the evolution of how she's ate over the, like, the time and start to eat different things. Like, oh, I don't like that. But then now she, now she eats it and it's, it's that evolution of changing how you've previously been used to eating. Yeah. And it is, it's a massive learning curve now. Half the time she's putting me right. Well, <laughs> have I, this, have that, do you know what I mean? It was actually Kieran this morning actually talking about like his uh, shred foods and that. Um, so his dieting foods where he's taking yeah, yeah. to work and some lady at work's been saying to him like, uh, like, how can you eat that? And it's like, and I, I said to Kevin this morning, it's actually real food you're eating. Yeah. You're actually eating, uh, what do you have? He said like chicken, potatoes and veg. Yeah. And it was like, that's what we always that's ate. That's crazy. It's real food. Think, like, like the, the breakfast one gets me. Like how on earth we ever decided that like sugary, a sugary bowl of carbohydrates is the great best thing in the world to have for breakfast. Yeah. Like it's like a donut. Like obviously, it's just market market. That was come like, back, yeah. Would, but do you know I'm, what I mean? I'm just it's being like, about that actually. <laughs> yeah, but like compared, to like say, like having eggs and stuff. Like mm, what you, the thing is, why? Like we all eat breakfast food for breakfast. Yes. Do yeah. you know what I mean like? I mean, I have ate steak for breakfast and stuff like that, but I'd never eat chicken breast for breakfast. Right. But why? I do. Like, there's no, there's no actual reason not to do it, apart from just in your head. You've just don't associate it with eating at that time of day. But this is an ingrained habit back up. Uh, it's also, it's, cult, it's cultural, it's systemic. Yes, it's, it is. It's, it's the environment. It's like, why do most people just grab a sandwich for lunch? Because that's just what they've always done. It's what everyone yeah. does. 
Like you said, it should never be viewed as something odd to eat well. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is, it's like, people, th people would sit there, snack, find a bag of crisps, big multi-bag of crisps, something that would feed a family. And yeah. no one would even big bat an island. But if I got out a bag of carrot sticks, what the fuck are you doing? Like, even though it's the, just a raw huh? natural the, the food. Look at you like you're a fucking idiot. Dicks. I remember um, <laughs> a few years year ago we were uh, on holiday and on a boat and there was um, like family, uh, I don't know which country, they weren't English anyway. And the mum handed them all out, a big raw carrot each. And they were all just sitting there, all the, all the kids. And like, I sort of laughed at myself. <laughs> fucking hell, it's a bit like... But then when you think about it, shouldn't be? Why should yeah. that be a strange thing to do? Why would it be normal to sit and hand your kid a, in that situation, a fizzy pop and chocolate and crisps? But like, we think it's strange to give your kid a carrot. I did, ridiculous. I, I did that, I made the mistake with Jake, I don't, I don't know if I've told you about it, but when he was a, he was a kid, like we, we fresh made all of his meals, mm. every, all of his baby yeah, food yeah. was complete, fresh, everything. And then as he got a little bit older, it was like, oh, what's our him kids food? Fish cakes and yeah. fucking beans? And it was like, what, why, why did I do that? I have this conversation all the time with media and stuff. Who invented kid food? Like, when, when, when did that become a thing? When did kids stop just eating smaller portions of human food? Mm -hmm. But say, why would you sit there if you were going to eat well or on a diet and say, all right, I'm going to put this into my, I'm going to eat this now because I'm on a diet and I'm being healthy. Well, it's given your children the same foods that you were fed that led you to have that systemic bad habits in the first place. Everything we've just talked about there, that, them habits that can't be broken, them, they're literally part of you, are what you develop when you're a child. And then you've got people trying to fix those habits, which they can't do because they're too ingrained into the brain, whilst putting the children th into the same habits that they yeah. can't then change. It's the making separate meals on the night. It's crazy. Like, uh, it's on the dinner time, like... Um the making separate yeah. meals, like, oh, I'm eating my diet food, even though that's you're, real you're, food. You're choosing to go out of your way to feed your kids something poorer than what they'd otherwise be eating. And the only reason, when kids are young, you've got three, you'll know more than me, kids eat anything. Yeah. When they're young, like before they school, will, they'll, they'll, kids will, will thing, eat yeah. anything. And most of the time, they'll like it. When do they stop? They stop and they get to school because they're sitting there and... and the kids go, eh, eh, that's minging that, that's minging yeah. that. And then all of a sudden, they start to believe it's minging. Yeah. If you're sitting there around six year mates and you're five year old and they're going, eh, what are you eating? You're going to think it's something strange, aren't you? Well, that's like when we serve uh, veg at home for Sarah and um, she's not eating it and we're still expecting Cassie to eat it. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you have to because if you don't make him eat it, he'll end up not eating veg as an adult himself. Oh, yes. That's, that's the thing, it's like, yeah, it's... You have to, <laughs> like, you have to try to, like, as sad as it is, it's all, people, once you're an adult, you're almost a lost cause, because <laughs> the habits are so hard to break, if you're that far gone, uh -huh. so therefore try to not to put your children into the same habits. Fuck, yeah. Do the, you know what I mean? It's, the, the kids is, like, a, it, it's mm. a huge one, because, like, it is, like, it's, it, it, you are feeding them the foods which got you fat in the first place. Yeah. And, and you're doing it at an age where it's so integral to the, to the growth of the being that they'll end up eating the same things in adulthood as well. And adults now, parents now, still have a crisps and chocolate cupboard oh, of course. because they had it in Definitely. their house when they were kids. The mad thing is, though, I think people tend to go one way or the other. They'll either not care, not do it at all, or they'll go too far. In the sense, you see the ones that go too far where they won't let the kids have anything. And then uh, as soon as the yes. kids get a bit of independence, they just go nuts because you've deprived, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's, it, you need balance. It's hard to get that balance. <laughs> oh, it is hard. I mean, like, I, like, when I, obviously, I was overweight when I was younger. Uh -huh. um, and, like, I thought, like, growing up, I was like, oh, like, I used to have, like, like, bad, like, bad habits. But when I actually look back, it wasn't actually that bad. It was probably 50-50, which, like, do you know what I mean? Although I did have... Would you, would you have said it was your activity levels then? You know what it is, like, I was playing rugby and stuff. Uh -huh. It was always like, the one, you'd be big. Yeah. Like, you'd go after the game and like, oh, you need to, like, you're a hooker, give you two, like, two hot two dogs, highs. you know what I mean? Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. It was like, it was that constant, like, trying to feed you up because of, obviously, what you were, what you were doing. I think it was more to do with that. Don't get us wrong, like, it didn't help, like, me, me grandmother used to proper feed us. Like, I used to, I used to, the thing is, I used to go home and she'd have, like, a little plate out, like, a cat plate. She'd yeah. have, like, a plate with, like, two or three biscuits on. You'd have that, but then you'd go home and have your tea. Yes. And obviously, only young. I mean, I was dead active as a kid. Um, and perhaps once I got to secondary school, I did lose the weight quite quickly anyway. Right. But like I said, I do. I think back and I think, oh, I had bad habits. But really, when you look back at the way I eat now, and you look back at the way my proper meals and stuff were, I actually probably didn't. Would you, would you say you, I mean, I, I think we've said before, like, but you're, uh, 
it, your man makes hearty meals. Oh, like honestly, like, like we, <laughs> since mo since moving out, I've lost four stone. Right. Um, obviously, part, part, part of that's been like on purpose as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, do you know, like the chicken joints? Yeah. Like the ones that just go straight in the oven, like stuffing that. In the right. Yes. I just get like one of them and just a pile of like plate, taties and veg and that. Just like that was it. That was a meal. Do you know what I mean? It's like. Could we win you? Did you bulk? I remember you saying when we were <laughs> me cooking. Like, so, so every night I was just going to eat what they were eating, which were big proper meals. Yeah. But I probably, they're probably the sort of meals you need if you were, like, they're the sort of meals I need now, when I'm doing this and then grafting all day. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I could do with going home to now. <laughs> but at the time I probably wasn't as active. Right. Yeah, it was always big meals. But they were proper meals. So I think for me it was always just, more just portion control. Right. And I've got better with portion control. Again, Lynn with Hope trying to like, help her lose weight and stuff and we we'll both just eat the same size, so that's why our portions controls have shrunk. We've pretty much over the, since lockdown, we've both lost almost the same amount of weight. Right. So that's make, making the same changes, doing the same steps, shrinking the same yeah. portions, which is quite funny actually, really. Yeah. In the sense of like, it's literally mirrored each other, the same changes. Brilliant. Um, but that's just, again, like, the steps, like, like the walking, we started walking. I mean, I've always liked walking, but probably didn't do much of it. But during lockdown, we've never stopped since, we're constantly out. Every day, and it's like that's a habit now that I, can't so I was going to say. So, you've put that habit in yeah, place, yeah. Definitely. I mean, over the last few years, I've put loads since of since lockdowns, yeah, so yeah. Put loads of positive habits into um, things like I said, portion control, things like that. I eat better now than I ever have, probably because I'm not as stressed about training as well, right? Yes, I mean, a lot of times, like you were just that desperate to get stronger, so like, like just trying to eat more, trying to do anything you can to like to, to lift more, so you, you just end up eating more because you just don't know what more you can do. Right. Do you know what I mean? So like a point of frustration of like, what else can I try to do to get stronger? Yeah. Um, so we're not as bothered about that anymore, which helps. And yeah, just the habits. But like now, if I don't go for a walk, like we not normally go for a walk like before tea, um, I'll go and train. And after, since we've been going to the gym and obviously on a night instead, and it's been darker, a lot of times we haven't been going for a walk, haven't needed to. Yeah. And like, I get me twitchy. Exactly. Like, I'm used to going at that time. And like I do, I get twitchy, the fact that I'm not doing it. Like, and it's hard, like it's become that much of an ingrained habit, it's hard to break, which is obviously what you try and look for. Course, like, I mean, as, as, the, as the lights get lighter, we'll go afterwards. Yeah. Um, but I cannot wait, because like, it's actually hard not to do. I've found it a struggle with the winter months, going out mm. for the walk, because me and Sarah have like a wear. three mile yeah. loop, and we haven't done it for absolutely that, ages It shows now. you like positive habits are hard to break, especially yeah. if you, and obviously these, this is the accumulation of like, two or three years. But it's quite funny now, because like now everyone knows us is walking everywhere. Like constantly, all the time. That's all anyone says. Oh, he's always out walking you. Like, it's, it's, it's quite Did funny. You, it was on the last one you said about people in the pub having a pint and them thinking you were weird for aye, walking. It's like you sit in the pub and looking and it's like, oh, look, they're off for another walk. But, aye. It's like, how, like pint. it's a Tuesday. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's just, I mean, it's bad. Where, where I live, it is very cultural, the drinking. But uh, that's the northeast. It, it's, I mean, it, like yeah. obviously, when you when you hit the, yeah. the villagers' concert, I suppose it's because like because I'm still very much like in that environment. Whereas you you're probably not. Do you know yes, what I mean? Yes, like, I am out of my. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Whereas yeah. like I'm still there, so I see it a lot. I hear it. Is, yeah, like do you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> but yeah, day. it is. It's like it's it should never be a strange thing to do something that's beneficial for your health, and it's like it's almost viewed as like weird to like to train the way you train, to go and do the steps, to eat your way that they eat. And people can't understand why you're doing that, but that should be normal. Well, it, let, should... <clears throat> let's go into the three session habit a week type thing, because where you're saying about normality, I bet you half of these people who's just started uh, these last two weeks will be telling people at work, I've trained that amount, and they'll be going, <clears throat> you don't need to. Oh, you're doing too much. You're doing <clears throat> too much, that's too much. You're obsessed. Yeah, you're obsessed. It's... Gym bunny. Yeah. <laughs> it should never be a negative. I mean, don't go wrong, it, it can be a negative. It can, it can be a negative. It can become a negative, But it's yeah. like, you're talking, about a very, like, you're talking about a very small percentage of people that ever have a fitness problem. Yes, <laughs> like, it Do is, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, if it's getting to the point where it's sort of dragging you down, then, you probably need to just step back a bit and refocus. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, that isn't a problem. <laughs> that isn't a problem. We've got an obesity problem. We don't have a problem with people doing too much activity yeah. and too much training. I know, but it, it's more, fr the thing is, and that's strange that because we do have the obesity problem, yet 
most of the most of people will be saying you're doing too much. Yeah. Whilst also Crazy. being overweight or whatever themselves. Yeah. It, it's it's like uh, Nikki actually is an example. Like obviously she's a step queen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? In, in yeah. people, well, Nikki's one of the few people that have actually she's almost she's done the full almost the impossible in the sense she's gone from being on one end of the spectrum to the other. Yeah. And it's so hard to do. But I need to get her on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, again, that's all been habit. Yeah. Habit success, but it's just building on. But she sets herself goals as well because she yeah. um, she'll she'll do like oh, forgetting what ste- like step challenge she's done this year. But what was it last year? It was like a million or yeah, it's like things crazy, like, yeah, like, like walk like the length of Britain in the equivalent yes. of steps and things like that. I think last year she did because she did it for her nephew. I think it was from visited every football stadium. Yeah. And, that, and that's what she did. And I don't know what virtual challenge she's doing yeah. this year, but it might be it's you. Great, it, keeps like you it keeps you motivated. Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, just... Sarah's mum did it, I think it was in lockdown, and it was, what is 10,000? It worked out at 10,000. It was, it was from Britain to Britain, but it worked out at 10,000 steps yeah. per day, something like that. Or, no, it was in miles. So she had to like, log three miles every day, so it was like 1,000 miles mm. over the course of the year, 1,000 and something. And she did it. Yeah. Next year, she didn't sign up to it. Stopped. And stopped doing her yeah. walks. I think that's the, that's the interesting bit. It's what, what makes people break. Like, if you build a habit like that, if you do that for long enough, you've got the habit there. Yeah. What makes you break? Like, Jimmy, like, we'll have people come here for, like, a couple of years, and they'll train three, four times a week, and they'll get the steps and do anything, and then they'll stop. But what, like, it's, like, we could never stop. I could never stop. Do you know what I mean? You couldn't stop. Like, do you know what I mean? I'll always... I like to think I always will, like will. What makes someone just stop something positive dead? Probably the stress in the life as well. Probably up. what we're going back to before. The thing is, well, like, exactly. Like I mean, not of, sleep, but I yeah, think but it's something stress, that's like a yes, and like some, a sheer, yeah, like it could, it could be a, a loss in a family. Yeah, something, something like that that's really knocked you. And then, and then that, and those then, few yeah. weeks where, say, you're mourning, say, yeah. say it is a loss of a family member, but those few weeks of where you're mourning and you're now not into your new habit cycle, yeah. like, you will revert yeah. back. I mean, I think you're probably in the same as me at the minute. Like, we've kind of, our evolution as a coach, uh-huh. we've kind of learned, like, everything we need to learn about training nutrition. And obviously, this side of things very much interests us now, like, the actual what is, what causes people to sort of stick with the whole habit things, like, how do you change like a person, like, and it's so deep rooted, and it's like, no, but it's like, <laughs> it is, well, it obviously, you, you, you always look for a new challenge. Yeah. Like I do, anyway. It's like you want to try to explore new ground. And like I said, I think it's just natural evolution of coaching. Like you've kind of like, we know, we know everything that anyone can ever do. Yeah. The question is now, why can't they? Yes. And that's like, yeah. the, the, do you know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's a really interesting, obviously, it's psychology, stuff like that. Um, it, it is, it's, it's fascinating. Obviously, what makes a person keep going? Keep, well, either keep going or stop going or, or be who they are and do what they do. I think, obviously, going back to that sleep thing at the start, I know it's a bit of a rewind. No, no, no. But I think more than anything, it highlights the importance of actually looking after yourself in terms of getting to sleep and like trying to avoid these stresses and problems. Because if you can manage to mitigate the risk of something like that happening, then you've got less chance of something knocking you off. Yeah. Obviously, certain things like health problems, like you said, family losses, things that you can't control. But, like, how many people actually get to bed on time? I know. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, if the effect that sleep has on hormones, appetite, the way you'll gain and lose weight, it's, it's so important. And yet people, people still don't, don't do it. But it's like everything we know about staying on track is ultimately depending on being able to stick to those habits. And if you're not prioritising your sleep and your rest and your recovery, then you're making yourself susceptible to these things. Yeah. It's almost like, thing, like we've sort of established you can't change the true you, in yeah. a sense of like the you, that the, the original yeah. you. You can build habits on top of that and stick to them. But ultimately, if anything, if you go wrong, you're always going to be susceptible to relapsing. Yeah. So how can 100%. you stop things going wrong? And that's, that's, that's where you start to look at the triggers. What are the triggers to these things? What are the stresses? And how do you address them? Well, that's I'm, all you can do, isn't it? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, it's I'm, the only like, angle you can look at it. I, I like I, I, when I get uh, pissed off, angry, right? Mm. Especially if I take it out in the kids or something like that, right? I thought I was just, I thought I had fucking anger issues, okay? <laughs> and probably other people have said that, <laughs> but 
then when, I, when, when I've studied it myself and stuff like that, it, it, it's actually come back to us just being tired. Yeah. Because if I've, if I've stayed up an extra hour, like say before I pick the kids up that afternoon, but then I've worked all morning and done something mm -hmm. else, and then I go and pick them up and say they're late coming out of school or something like that, and I'm, the first thing I say, the fuck are you late for? I mean, when you're dying. Yeah. Everyone goes aggressive as fuck when, well, I certainly, like when you're dying, because you're, yeah. you're, you're, like <laughs> you're in a deprived state. <coughs> you, you get hungry, you get angry, because... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the same as being tired, but again, is that, are you, like, it's kind of, an, is, is, as well, it's kind of your true personality coming out, do you know what I mean? Kind of, most people, well, certainly depend on who you are, if you've got that in you, then you kind of suppress it and go with life and you'll control it, but then when you're tired, they'll sneak out. Yeah, and it that's does. The same, like, do you know what yeah, I mean? It's 100%. like, it's, obviously, it's probably getting less so in the sense of, like, People don't have as much like aggression and stuff anymore, but it's kind of you keep a you keep a lid in it, you keep everything right, and then something goes wrong, and then it creeps out. And again, it's the same with bad habits. It's the same as all anything that's suppressed is always going to creep out under those. It's why people behave in a certain way when they drink; they lose control. Because yeah. again, it's it's the same as you're putting yourself in a compromised state, so so it gives something a chance to creep out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, no, it, 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 uh, it does. I mean, like, we'll, we'll stick on the, 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 the sleep thing as well. Because it is like, it, think of someone who's late at 6 a.m., right? Oh, and because, I, I know, I know, <laughs> let's not go into as much as that. But generally, like, if, if it says somebody who hasn't, who, who generally isn't late, mm. but they do come in, what the fuck are you late for? And they're like fucking angry at you. And it's like, you've stayed up a little bit mm. too late. That's why you're late in anyway. And it, and it comes out of that. And one, and one of the main things, what I'll always fucking say to people is, like, just get to bed for nine, something like that. Because what happens, what good happens mm. after nine? Just sit and watch telly. And telly's fucking shite anyway. It's not like the work. And just sit and staring at something you're not even that interested in. Yeah. It well, you, me, sometimes you are interested in it. Nowadays, like, when you walk around, like, it blows my mind, because I don't watch a lot of telly. Literally, maybe it's an hour on a night. Literally, uh -huh. we'll finish tea, we'll go to bed, put something on for maybe an hour, and not yeah. fall asleep. When you go for a walk on a night and you walk around in the country, every house you walk past is just sitting on a couch, just staring at a box. It's like literally the whole world's out there. And the most interesting thing we can think to do with our time is just sit like that, stare in the fucking box. <laughs> like people spend all weekend, six hours watching a box, just sitting, just staring well, at the And that's the most, that's the most Sunday, interesting yeah. thing you can think to do. We live in a beautiful country, there's walks, there's so many things you can go and do, and the most, the best thing you can possibly think to do with your time is sit like this and stare at the fucking because box. Because it's easy. The thing it's is, where, I know, yes it is, but the <laughs> thing is, because, because of the friction, say, for the 10,000 steps, go back yeah. to that one, so it's like, right, you've got to get your 10,000 steps, but what's easier, sitting on the couch watching Wednesday, oh, of course. Yeah, or having, uh, like, a little bit cold, it's a bit snow the day, so a little bit cold, having to get the shoes on and going out for a walk. Yeah. That's, yeah. Then it comes to the friction point of that mm. habit. <laughs> it makes us laugh because like, I don't know what you were like as a kid, but obviously like, I was hyperactive. Right. Like had all the, them things, like, do you know what I mean? Like I was an active kid, you know, hyperactive kid, disruptive kid, this, that, the other. Couldn't behave in school, things like that. But like, I couldn't sit still and I still can't. Right. Even if I talk, I'm wondering. Yeah. And it's like, I'm so grateful I'm like that. Like when you're a kid, you've sort of vilified for it and it's like a problem. I'm so pleased that I cannot be one of the people that can sit on the couch for two hours and not do anything because it makes us hyperproductive. It's because you don't have Fortnite. People go on. <laughs> you know, it is. I've got a PlayStation, probably one, <laughs> one or two games on FIFA. Yeah. I'll lose the control roll game. That'll be me done. Again, I'll go and do something else. But like, people go on as if this is a super negative thing. To me, it makes you hyperproductive. Yeah, I bet I'm, there's a, I'm, I'm super active. I bet there's a lot of people who were like that at school who've gone on to be relatively successful because you've just got all this energy. You can't sit still. You can't do nothing. You, they, it's, like, I'd rather have someone like that come work for us than some lard ass who's just going to be more. You'd want Davey Wise working for you, wouldn't like, you? Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like high, exactly. energy, high energy. And it's like these things that people, again, the, society puts you in a box and treats it as a negative thing because at the time it might be, but as life goes on, is it that much of a negative thing? Mm. Or can it be positive? It's like we want everyone to fit in this perfect little box. And basically, the, what people want is people to just go to fucking work, yeah. make the money, Drive the car, fill it with petrol, order takeaways, spend money, sit in front of that fucking box, and everyone fucking do, everyone just falls into the trap of doing it. But it's that's consumerism, though. Well, it is, it? but yeah. everyone just like a hamster in a wheel, just follows the fucking. Well, no, they're just like I said, they're just following exactly what they're expected to do because from young you just the, everyone they try to get everyone to be the same. And again, it's the same with the eating, same with everything. 
everyone's constantly trying to get people to just follow the same path, but that's not necessarily a good thing. And no. that's why everyone thinks that anyone that deviates off this path is doing something strange or wrong, but most of the time it's positive. And most of the time it's normal. Well, it's actually no, it's, really, what, it's what should be normal. Should, should it's what be should normal. be normal. Yeah. So right, last one. I, I was going to do like one to ingrain good habits, but I think with you in in like um, your steps, how obviously mm. like like I think you, you, your main focus is always that, and because and because that is probably the the easiest thing for people to do. It's free, all the rest of it. Of course. So what top tip would you give to somebody just trying to reach that ten thousand per day? Probably start small. Right. So, like, if, you, if you've only done 2,000 steps, realistically, how long is it going to take you to go out and do, to get the, like, the remaining eight, seven or 8,000? It's going to be a canny walk, that, isn't it? An hour 20. So if you yeah. try and do that, you might do it the first night. If you try and do that again and again and again, you're going to be sick of your fucking life. <laughs> you are. Yeah. So why don't you just go and do a 20-minute walk? Yes, you're not going to get 10,000 steps, but how long, how many weeks are you going to be able to do that 20 minute walk. It's quite a sustainable thing to do that for most people. Yep. Um, they could actually do that long term. And then after you've done it for a couple of months, you might want to do half an hour. Do you know what I mean? And then you're slowly building up. And then all of a sudden, if you're used to doing a 30 or 40 minute walk, doing an hour walk doesn't actually seem like that much of a change. It's just doing that half hour twice. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So that's that thing. Just again, you're making. No one ever wants to admit that they're not close to being able to do something. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Everyone wants to, always wants to think they can make the jump. Yeah. And they can't. So make the gap smaller. Like set, that set that as you yeah. go. Do you know what I mean? Like make it smaller. So if you get two, see you can do five because you're going to be able to actually do that consistently. Whereas if you start trying to get 10, you're going to end up sick. I'd get sick. If every night I had to go and do an hour and a half walk, you'd get sick. Do you know what I mean? Do you, like at the minute, dark, miserable snow, it's, un, it's not going to happen. So, and would you set a time frame for that? Like, if, if, if they say that person's only hitting 2,000 and he's telling them, to, right, let's just hit 5,000, would you say do it for a month, two months? Yeah, probably a month, say a month. A month? A month, and then maybe start to step it up. Oh, there's one... Um, and then to 6,000. There's another one saying, um, like, four, four 10-minute walks are better than one 40-minute walk. Right. Only slightly, because you're getting your heart rate up and down four times okay. rather than just once. But from a management point of view... That's a lot easier to do. You could easily just quickly, before you go to work, just 10 minutes around the block. Yeah. Anyway, like, it's nothing. Do you know what I mean? You're not even going to bat an eyelid doing that. If you've got a dog, you probably should be doing that anyway. Lunchtime. Most places you should be able to get 10 minutes. Even if it's just walking, like, anyway. Do you know what I mean? Take your lunch with you. Put a podcast in, anything. If you're doing a call, um, 10 minutes at lunch. So you've done 20 minutes already. So when you go home, you do your 20 minute walk on the night. You've done 40 minutes of walking that day, but it's bite size. Yeah. It's, it's manageable. A step tracker helps. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Again, one of them things that's going on with the other, working from home. Mm -hmm. For some people, it's having a great effect on them in the sense they've got more freedom, they, are, they can get out, they can manage their own time better. But for some, I think it's terrible for them because you're, all, you're not having to go out and do anything. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. You literally, you can roll out the fucking bed. You don't even have to walk to your car. You straighten your computer and tell you, I think the biggest problem with working from home is that I've noticed more people than ever drink mm -hmm. on weeknights and on Sundays because they don't have to drive in the morning. Whereas people previously, like people I know, where they wouldn't have previously went out if they had work in the morning, now they do and now they drink because they don't have to worry about getting up and driving. And it's, 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 it takes away responsibility and the more freedom people get, the more bad decisions they make. I know it sounds extreme, but like people shouldn't be in charge of their own decision making because most people make terrible decisions. <laughs> like the, if people don't have rules in place, they'll just go fucking nuts. Yeah. They, it's you need boundaries, but most people, especially as adults, don't have them. No. But then I suppose with the, oh, I'm going forever, Dan. I tell you what, we'll end it there because <laughs> I, I had to, I was going to swing off to another conversation. We well, thank you very much, bud. Cheers. Ha, ha, ha.